Hello there. So recently I've been playing around with the WAN video generation model here. Uh, I'm trying a few things out, uh, particularly with face tracking in the last week or so. I made a video a few days ago. I got some uh, pretty good results, I think. I got a lot of questions in the comments section about how to do this, where to find the workflow, that sort of thing. So I thought I would do a bit of a video tutorial here to go over some of that. Okay, so here is one version of the workflow that I'm using. So here's the output that we're going to be uh, building here. And that's being driven by this video here. Let me just turn this audio off. Just uh, moving my head around a bit. Looking really goofy. It tracks very well. Um, the eyes and the eyebrows, they don't always match up. I mean, it's coherent in the video itself. Like, it looks like she's moving very naturally, but if you compare it directly with what's going on in the video here, it, it doesn't quite match up. So overall, this uh, workflow, it's just a template workflow from the, the basics here. You get uh, essential stuff here, image, video. This is the one I'm using here. This is a image to video workflow that uses a control video. So you would load in a reference image here and a control video that has the motion that you want here. And in the workflow as it is right now, it's passing the image through here. But that's not what we want to do. Now, by default, it's got this canny edge detector uh, control net. This is not what I'm using in my workflow. Using a pose estimator instead. So what I'll do is I'll recreate what's going on here in the demo over here so you can make some sense of this. Okay, so here's the reference image, the control video. So right now it's going through this uh, canny edge detector. Let me just make sure some of these settings are... Okay, so it's going to produce a video that's 81 frames long. 720 by 720, we don't want that. Let's make it uh, 480 by 720, so it's going to go a bit quicker. 16 frames per second, let's put that up to 30. So we should see the detection on here. Now this is not what we want to use, but it's still interesting to see what will happen. So let's run this. Oh yeah, and while that's run, no. Okay. Maybe I won't run that. Let's try 41. Too much memory. I was doing the poses as well. So let me just expand this out. What it's doing here is it's uh, drawing some edges around the frames of the video. Got these edge detection frames. And it's going to process this over here. Let's get this out of the way. So we're just doing 41 frames right now, so this is going to be like a second and a half. All right, so there she is. It's looking pretty good. That should match about the first second of what's going on here. Now, because it's using uh, edge detection, it's not really ideal. This is not really the ideal way to do 
um, sort of a face animation. I mean, it can be helpful, it can be useful, you can do it this way. But this one over here is definitely the better result. This is the pose detector. So it's going to give you this kind of thing. It's going to estimate the pose for each frame in the video. You want to feed that over here. Now when we run this again, this should match up a lot better with what's going on over here. Well, it will be better, but really it's just a different way of doing kind of the same thing. Really, the best approach would be to be layering these and, and using both of them at the same time. To be honest, I'm not sure how to do that yet. I know in normal image generation, when I'm using Stable Diffusion XL or something like that, I'll usually stack a few of these, like the, the canny edge, the pose, uh, a depth pass, a uh, normal map pass, and, and uh, I'll get into that in a minute. Right, so this is done now, and I think, yeah, the, the head motion is a lot better. It's a lot closer to what's going on over here. But there are other ways of doing it, too. So there's also, uh, you could use depth, a normal map, and there are other ones as well. They all have slightly different outcomes. You would use them for different situations. So let's go through some of them right now and see what they look like. So I happen to know that this one here will give pretty good results, but they're also kind of strange results. So let's have a look at that. So this is going to extract uh, sort of 3D information from the scene that has to do with uh, sort of the incident angle. If you, if you uh, know what a normal map is, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. My expectation is that it's probably going to result in her face being a bit distorted, maybe m more closely resembling my face, but it probably will transfer my uh, eyebrows and my eyes a bit better. So maybe some of those micro expressions. We'll find out. Well, I got this one processing too, so we can have a look at this. This is going to be a depth map. So after we finish, uh, after we finish trying this one, we can have a look at this one to see how that looks when we want to use it over here. So it's a it's a depth map. I gotta say I'm a bit uh, pleasantly surprised. I've done this in the past and it has uh, distorted the face a lot more, but actually this is working out really well. Just have a look over here. It's doing a pretty good job. So we can try out the depth map as well. See what that one does. So like I was saying, um, what I'm used to doing with image generation is you have all of these different uh, filters and you can control the strength that they're going to apply to the image generation. So you don't have to choose between which one you want to use. You have like a, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a lot of this, a little bit of that, or, or whatever the proportions happen to be. And you can sort of fine tune how much you want to 
process. But right now I haven't figured out how to do that with video. All right, so using the depth map, um, it's ba she's basically not following my head movements at all. And probably most of the motion that's being generated here is just all on, on the part of the model making up some, some stuff. So it, it's going to adhere the motion to sort of be within the figure ground relationship of the depth map. But that's probably the only thing that's really going to be happening with this, if I had to guess. So this seems to be the way to go. And that is the uh, DW pose estimator. Yeah, much better. So that's essentially the workflow I'm using here. Um, additionally, um, for those interested, I thought I might talk a bit about how uh, I created this image. Now, this is a very elementary workflow for doing image generation with Stable Diffusion XL using the Juggernaut XL checkpoint, which is excellent. And over here, I have uh, Laura, a custom model that I've trained on my character so that I can always generate images of the same character. My prompt over here, and this, this here is the key word I'm using that's triggering this Laura to sort of activate, so it knows to generate my character specifically. So this is what we're generating here. Just some settings in the sampler, this is sort of rendering I'm calling it. Here's our output image. Now I'm going to do a... This isn't really necessary because the output on its own is actually really good. But a lot of the time, this may not be the case. You might get some distortions in the face. It's fairly typical for this to happen. So there's a good reason to do a face detailing pass afterwards. So this is the the first output, and this is the output with the face detailer. Like here, they look almost identical. So this is not a great example, actually, but this is useful sometimes. And over here, I'm just saving it. But let me go through a new generation here so we can have a look at this. I just move through the seed number. Load the checkpoint. It's going to pass through to the sampler. All right, so there she is. Now we're going to do some face detailing. All right, again, it's almost indistinguishable. So probably this is not necessary right now. The, the checkpoint is very good, and the LoRa is pretty well trained. So this whole step is probably not necessary. Let's try giving her a spacesuit. So for training the LoRa, I have a folder of about, I don't know, 250 images or so, uh, just character images. So to do the training, I used Koya SS. That's it here. It's a whole lot of instructions on how to work with this. It worked very well. I think it took about I want to say about three hours to do the training. Now, typically, training a Laura like this for a character, I don't know, I guess you need 30 or 50 images or so or something like that. So I, I was using about 250, which is probably overkill. It's way too many. But it seems to work pretty well, getting uh, very good, consistent results. All right, lastly, uh, so I've just generated a, an image here. Let's bring that back over to the workflow here. Try that one out. We'll do 
make this one longer. So this could take a minute or two. It's reprocessing the pose. It's probably loading the checkpoint now. Okay, so while this is loading, if this is going to take a minute or two, there are two different versions of this model. There's a 14 billion parameter model and a 1.3 billion model. So this one takes a lot more processing power. And then even within that, there are different versions for 720p and 480p. This LoRa here apparently increases the speed by reducing the number of steps and the CFG required to do the, the sampling. I'm not really sure how that works. I just know that it does. <laughs> All right, this is almost done. So for me here, I'm making an image that's, or video that's 720 by 480 uh, vertical and 121 frames. And that's taking about two minutes maybe. I guess maybe a minute and a half. It's pretty snappy. 30 frames per second. All right, so here's the video that's come out of this. I think that's worked out pretty well. Now you can set the resolution quite a bit higher, as much as, I don't know, about 1280 by 720 with this model. And you can make it about as long as, I don't know, maybe 210 frames, 209, let's say. And it will still work, but that's about the limit of, of what I've been able to do anyways. And it will take a, a lot longer to do with those kinds of settings. Well, that's all for this video. I uh, hope that was interesting, uh, helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments.